everybody, welcome back to day two of our 30 day EKG challenge. And today we have a fun EKG and a really fun concept to go over. It's the premature atrial contraction. Remember that you can follow along every single day and we're gonna build on every concept. So if you haven't watched day one, I will check it out in the playlist. All right, so let's jump in to this strip. So what I wanna kind of reemphasize from day one is the uh, how the sinus node behaves. We said that the sinus node is a very predictable node that sits high in the right atria, right there, the SA node. And the sinus node is the pacemaker node of the heart. So in a sinus rhythm, you will see the sinus node beat and generate a contraction or a wave of depolarization within the atria that creates those sinus P waves. Remember we said that sinus P waves head down and to the left, which will produce a sinus P wave that's upright in lead one in upright and AVF, and of course, upright and lead two as well, right? We also said that the sinus P waves then must be delayed. The signal must be delayed by the AV node, and the AV node will then pass that signal down the Hisperkinji fibers, generate the QRS complex. And the amount of time that it delays that signal is 120 to 200 milliseconds, or three to five small boxes. And then we said, that our Hisperkinji fibers are gonna generate our nice narrow QRS complexes, right? So those are our QRS complexes. Those QRS complexes are going to be narrow because of the rapid conducting nature of those Hisperkinji fibers. And they're gonna be upright in the leads that head down and to the left because the signals are gonna be going down and to the left. So when I look at this EKG here, I'm gonna notice a few things. First. I'm gonna look at the forest, or really what that means to me is I'm gonna get an idea of what is going on with the rhythm. So I pick a rhythm strip, maybe lead two right here, and I look across the rhythm. And I notice it's a pretty regularly occurring rhythm, regular, regular, regular. And if I zoom in on the regularity of kind of the initial aspect of this strip, you see that I've got P waves right here. And those P waves are conducting nicely to these QRS complexes, right? We can see they're doing so with a PR interval that seems to be normal, right? That PR interval seems to be at about 120 to 200 milliseconds. So right now, this looks to me like a nice sinus rhythm. Remember we said that we can verify if those P waves are coming from the sinus node by looking at the morphology of the P wave. We said P waves are upright in leads one and leads AVF, and so let's take a look at those P waves. We see lead one here. We have upright P waves. In lead AVF, we've got upright P waves. Those are our sinus P waves. So here we have a sinus rhythm. We can measure the rate of our sinus node in this case, and maybe use the, the QRS that lands kind of right on that solid line, and we can count 300, 150, 100, 75, 60. This would be 50, so somewhere between 50 and 60, so maybe 55 beats per minute. So our sinus node in this case is actually beating just underneath that threshold of 60, so we could call this a sinus bradycardia, okay? And that just means that the sinus node is going a little bit slow. 55 beats per minute, sinus bradycardia, not a huge deal. But what I want to get at is that the sinus node is driving this rhythm. The sinus node beats regularly, predictably, because it's a pacemaker cell. It has a pacemaker action potential, which rhythmically beats and beats and beats. So when I look at this strip, and when I continue to look throughout the strip, what I'm going to notice is that we've got kind of this, let's zoom in here. We've got these regular beats that are beating nice, regular, regular, and I would expect my next beat to land right there, but notice it comes early. So this beat comes early in blue. The sinus node typically does not just fire off early. So when I see a beat that comes early, we would say this is a premature beat. And that tells me this is so premature. This is unlike the SA node. The SA node would not be this predictable and then all of a sudden not. So this premature beat is arising from somewhere that is not the SA node. 
it, we would say this is an ectopic beat. And so there are a few investigations into this type of ectopic beat that can help us clue in to the fact that, as the title of the video uh, states, it's a premature atrial contraction. So how do we know it's a premature atrial contraction? Well, let's just think of the name. So a premature atrial contraction has the word atrial. So let's go premature atrial. This tells me that the premature beat is arising from the atria. And so the atria typically gets its signal from the SA node, right? We said that usually signal comes from the SA node and it fires off. And we said that this early beat arises and that's not indicative of the SA node. So what might be the case? Well, in a premature atrial contraction, there's an ectopic focus in the atria. So let's look nice and close here. So maybe there's a focus, I'll do it in green. Maybe there's a, it's just some cells somewhere in the atria, maybe here. These cells in the atria fire off. Remember, every single cell, every single myocardial cell has the ability to produce a signal independent of the cells around it. It usually doesn't happen though, but it can. And so some cells get a little bit excited and they boop. And what happens is, is that creates a wave of depolarization across the atria. And look, all the way across the atria. That's going to create a P wave. Just like when the sinus node does it, this is going to generate a P wave. The difference is, and why I always talk about P wave morphology, this P wave, look at the direction it's headed. It's headed in a different direction than the sinus node would. It's heading, in this case, away from the inferior. It's heading from inferior to superior. And so this P wave is obviously not going to be the same as these P waves in AVF. It might be negative in AVF. If it's heading more towards the left, it might be negative in lead one. What I'm getting at is that if it's coming from an ectopic site of origin, it's going to produce a P wave within the coronal leads, within these limb leads that are cutting through me up and down, just like this. It is going to create a P wave morphology that does not fall in line with the SA node. There are very rare exceptions, but I want you guys to really understand this is a basic concept. This is fundamental. So we will have a P wave that's produced that is ectopic, just like we said. But here's the thing about premature atrial contractions. This ectopic P wave that just got produced by that green signal, guess what? It's going to run into the rest of the conduction system just like a normal beat. So just like the sinus beats go to the AV node down to the Hesperkinsey fibers, these premature atrial contractions will also depolarize through to the AV node. And what's that AV node going to do? It's going to delay that signal by 120 to 200 and, uh, milliseconds, or three to five small boxes. And then it's going to send that signal down the exact same Hesperkinsey system that we're used to and create a wave of depolarization. And this wave of depolarization is the exact same wave of ventricular depolarization that we see in all the normal sinus beats. So when I look for a premature atrial contraction, what am I looking for? I'm looking for a P wave that is not in the predictable or same fashion as the sinus P waves. And so let's re-address uh, this premature beat. We can take a look at prior beats and notice what, what did the beats look like before? Notice that here are my P waves, P, P wave, P wave, P wave. Those are my sinus P waves. And I can tell that those sinus P waves in this case are upright. Well, look what happens to this P wave. That P wave is negative. This is a negative P wave. We'll do it in green because that's how we did our, our ectopic beats earlier. That's a negative P wave. That's a P wave that is clearly arising from somewhere not in the same location in the atria as a sinus node. So that clues me in. It's an early beat with a P wave that precedes a QRS that is a different morphology. Well, let's take a look at that QRS complex. The QRS is a pretty much a mirror image. This QRS is practically a mirror image of the normal QRS complexes that I'm drawing in black. And that's exactly what we said was gonna happen. We said that this conduction system from the AV node down should pretty much be unaffected. And that's what we see. 
And then the last thing we can look at really quickly is the PR interval associated with this. Look at that PR interval. And that PR interval is the same as all of the other PR intervals. And so this tells me that there is a premature atrial focus that fired off, creating that ectopic P wave, but then follows through the rest of the conduction system like normal. And so that's how you evaluate an ectopic or an early beat, a premature beat, to determine if it's from atrial origin. You can obviously see in this beat, if you want to try it yourself, let's take a look again. The second half of the rhythm, we see the resumption of our rhythm. We see we have these regularly occurring beats, and then we have a early beat. Look at that, it's an early beat. Let's do it different lead this time. Let's go here, this is lead two. Notice these P waves are normally nice and upright, and then all of a sudden, we have this early beat. And there's that nice negative P wave before a normally occurring or a regularly occurring QRS with the normal PR interval. So these are two premature atrial contractions in this rhythm. So that's how you identify a PAC. That's how, I, that's how you identify where the PAC is coming from. And this is important, right? Because we need to know, you know, is this person, you know, what are these beats coming from anatomically? What do we need to treat if this is a treatable condition, right? Obviously everything on an EKG is a tool for clinical correlation, okay? So um, I hope that helps. I hope that you better understand premature atrial contractions, what is actually happening within the conduction system and why these rhythms behave this way. Remember that this is a series. We're gonna build and build and build. So everything that I teach you here is just a branching point for your knowledge, right? I give you one piece of knowledge. So say here, I give you the first piece of knowledge today. Remember that this knowledge is just a new branching point, right? You just learned the basics of PACs. Now you can learn maybe premature atrial contractions with aberrancy. Maybe you can learn premature atrial contractions with a functional uh, first degree AP block or rate related first degree AP. There are so many nuances. And so use this, everything you learn here, use this as this is where I am now, and now I can go from there. So I hope this helps. Um, leave a comment if you think um, you have a question or anything. And if not, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next uh, video.